Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been working on the vocabulary words out of this book here, chapter 3 of the book, the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of the book that I'm holding in my hand here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. In addition to vocabulary, if you happen to need help in the math portion of the exam, you will find that we have solved every single math problem from this book in the 50 videos that are listed right here. HESI, just type in HESI Math Day 1 all the way up to day number 50. And there you find the solution to all the problems. If you need additional math, math help, if you need to work on, if you feel the need to work on more problems to get more exercises, you will find 80 more videos which deal with the math problems that are, that are presented in the T's book. And as you know, the math on the T's and the math on the HESI, they are very comparable. Let's get going. Today is our lesson number. Today is our lesson number 13 and we are on page number 50. Page number 50, the very first word that we have here is, is a very simple word, very straightforward word. The word is access. Access. As you can see, very simple, very straightforward, just two syllables. What does access mean? It just means more than what is needed. More than what is needed or required. If you have more than what is required, if you have more than what is needed, you, know, you have an excess amount, you have an overflow, you have a surplus. An amount or quantity beyond an amount and amount or quantity beyond what is normal or sufficient. As I said, an excess is an overflow. It's an overflow. It's a, I forget now what, what other words I use. Uh, it's an overflow, it's an excess, above and beyond what is needed. It is, a, I forget the last the other word that I used a second ago. Excess is noun, as you can see. What's the adjective of excess? If you have excess of something, you said that you have excessive amount of it. Notice the difference. Excess and excess. Excessive amount. Excessive amount. Not excessive amount, but excessive amount. It's an adjective, as I said. Which simply means something that is exceeding what what is considered the normal level, ordinary level, the proper level, a reasonable level. If you have something that is above and beyond the normal reasonable level, then you say you have an excessive amount. The synonym of, an, of the word excessive. Let's learn a synonym. A synonym that is typically used. A word that is typically used, rather a typical a word that is typically used. As a synonym of the word excessive is what we're going to learn next. And that word is Oh surplus was the word. Overflow. And then finally I said surplus. It came to me just now. In, o, de, inordinate, which is an adjective, just like this one is an adjective. It's an adjective because they are, because they are synonym. They are synonym. In, inordinate amount simply means an excessive amount, an amount that is above and beyond what is needed, what is required, what is called for. Inordinate amount, above and beyond what is considered normal. Above and beyond what is considered 
normal, reasonable, or usual. Something that is above and beyond what is considered normal, proper, reasonable, is said to be excessive amount, inordinate amount. So if, if you take too long to solve a problem, typically I use this word in the context of math problem, if it's taking us too long, we say, no, this method is no good, this method does give me the answer, this method does give me the answer to the problem, but it is no good for the exam, because the exam that I'm preparing for is timed exam, I'm being timed, and this method is no good because it's taking inordinate amount of time. This method is taking inordinate amount of time, it is taking excessive amount of time, it is taking unreasonable amount of time. I don't have that much time, I don't have five minutes to solve the problem. I need a quick and dirty way, I need a quick method. It's taking me inordinate amount of time, it's taking me excessive amount of time. Let's learn the next word that we have. Number 61. Number 61. Egg, that's the first syllable, egg, zor, so far so good, exorbitant, exor, b, tent, exorbitant, egg, zor, b, tent, exorbitant, exorbitant means unreasonable unreasonable exceeding normal limits exceeding normal limit or bound it means immoderate immoderate is the antonym of moderate moderate means reasonable Immoderate means unreasonable. Immoderate or finally excessive. People usually talk about people usually talk about exorbitant price. An exorb an exorbitant price is a price that is being charged by a merchant that you consider unreasonable, excessive, too much, above and beyond the normal limit. I'm not going to go to that coffee shop again. He wants five dollars for a cup of coffee. I, I find that exorbitant. I find that thoroughly exorbitant. I'm not going to pay five bucks for a cup of coffee. Do you understand? Exorbitant amount of money, exorbitant price, it just means unreasonable, above and beyond what is considered normal or reasonable. Let's move on. The next word that we have, now you understand, I'm, I'm giving you the def definition of these words in a very broad sense, not in a very narrow scope of the meaning that you find in the book. The, the, the meaning that they give you in the books are limited to what you will encounter in the medical field. I'm giving you a broader, much broader meaning, a general meaning uh, that incorporates a uh, wider array of situations. Do you understand? I'm trying to see here what, how they say it. Never mind, that word actually is not even in the book. It, it, I covered it, I covered it because it came to my mind, it came to my mind because it's a synonym of excessive. Because it's a synonym of excessive. And excessive is in the, in the book. So since we learned the word excessive, so why not learn exorbitant? We see it all the time in the news, in the, in the newspaper, in the magazine. Uh, some people describe a hotel or a coffee shop or whatever it is, a, sh a shop that, that sells a pair of jeans. Uh, it's a, they, 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 they charge an exorbitant amount of money. I'm not going to go there again. Let's go to the next one, number 62. Number 62. And the word is fatal.
fatal, very simple, very straightforward, it's an adjective. Fatal simply means deadly, deadly or something that results in death. Deadly or something, something that results in death. Something that results in death. So if a disease is described as, as fatal, it simply means that if you were to contract that disease, if you were to contract that disease, uh, the person is very likely to actually die because this disease is fatal. It's very dangerous. It causes, it usually causes, it usually results, the end result of the, having this disease is death. You, you will die. It will result in, it will result in that, and here we need the noun. The noun is, Fatality, fatality, fatality. Some people pronounce it with, uh, with the first syllable being fe, fatality. Some people pronounce it with the first syllable being fe, fatality. And some people pronounce it with the first syllable being fur, fatality. Either way, it's considered an acceptable pronunciation. It simply means a death that results from, a death that results from an unexpected, event or an occurrence, usually an accident. Fatality is a noun, which simply means a death, a death that results from an unexpected, event such as such as an accident such as an accident because accident of course by very definition by its very defi definitions are unexpected yesterday we had a collusion of two trains in my in my town two trains collided on the tr tr track they had a head-on collusion, two trains. Luckily, luckily, there were no fatalities. There were no fatalities. Nobody died. It wasn't a fatal accident. It was a very grave accident. Lucky for us, it wasn't fatal. It did not result in anybody's death. Understand? Let's move on. The next word that we want to learn is actually not a word so it's a phrase, and we're doing it just for the hell of it. That's the technical reason. So let's take a look at it. 63. It's a French expression, obviously. You know what it means? Femme, femme, as in lady or a woman, and of course the second part is femme, and the second part, and because it's it's the French expression, you have to pronounce it in a French way. Fatal, fatal. The first first syllable is fur, and then tal. Two dots, of course, that means you have to pronounce it as al. Femme fatal. Femme fatale literally means exactly what it says. Literally, it means a fatal woman. Fatal woman, femme fatale. But contrary, contrary to what some might believe, femme fatale is not called because she's so fat, so huge, so humongous that if she were on the top, the guy would get crushed. That's not what it means. That's not why she's called femme fatale. A femme fatale. Do you know what that is? Femme fatale is a lady of stunning beauty. A woman, a lady, a woman of 
turning or if you like extraordinary beauty I don't know how to spell beauty extraordinary beauty and and therefore and immense seductive powers she has immense seductive powers because she is so stunning she is so extraordinarily beautiful that uh, that uh, it will be fatal if to get kind in contact with her because eventually uh, because obviously you're going to succumb to her beauty obviously you will succumb to her seduction because she has such immense seductive power because she has such immense seductive powers which is why she's called which is why she's said to be a femme fatale not because she's so huge that she might crush you if she happens to be on the top understand fine